product differentiation. In the last two recordings, what exactly we have seen? We have seen that we can avoid Bertrand paradox. How we can avoid Bertrand paradox? One, instead of playing in prices, we can play in quantities. That is Kurno competition. So that is one way to avoid Bertrand paradox. What is the another way of to avoid Burton paradox? The another way is that if we have capacity constraints. Then also you can avoid Burton paradox, right? Well, there is an another way also to avoid the Burton paradox. That is, uh, instead of saying that both the goods, sorry, both the firms are producing the homogeneous product, we can say that the that the firms are going to produce the differentiated products. So, for example, my company is producing one kind of toothpaste and your company is producing one and is producing another kind of toothpaste. So everything else is same. It is just that the packaging might be different. So my toothpaste would be white in color while your toothpaste could be, could be red in color or whatever. It could be indifferent. So, so, so we can avoid the Bertrand paradox if we can allow for the if we can allow for the differentiated goods, in I mean we can just release the assumption, we can drop the assumption of homogeneous products, and we can talk about the differentiated products, right? So now suppose that there are n firms. There are n firms that are simultaneously choosing prices. that are simultaneously choosing prices, right? That is, first form is choosing P1, second form is choosing P2, and so on and so forth. For their differentiated products. For their differentiated products. And each of the product I, they have their certain attributes which are attached to them. Now, attributes could be anything. I mean, they could be, those attributes could be the physical location. This attribute could be the color of the product. This attribute could be the size of the product, could be anything. I mean, so my product is different on the basis of size. My product is different on the basis of location. My product is different on the basis of color or whatsoever. So it could be anything. So these attributes, they can also reflect the quality, right? So product I, has its own specific attributes, AI. So they can, these, these attributes, they can reflect quality, they can reflect advertising, they can reflect whatever, location. So how is location an attribute? So for example, you and I are selling uh, bread. The bread is going to be same, right? Uh, so, but my, my uh, shop is located near to a certain place, certain locality. And with respect to that locality, your shop is little far off. So even though both of us are selling almost the same thing, but people are going to buy it from me because I'm nearer to them instead of buying it from you. That's an idea. So from I's demand is QI which is dependent upon its own price 
and price of all other competitors, competitors, T minus I. So whenever we're using minus, it means apart from I. So TI is, for example, I'm the i form. So my demand is going to be dependent upon the price which I'm charging. And T minus I is the price which you are charging, right? All other firms prices. And similarly, it is dependent upon my attribute and attributes of all other firms apart from my firm. Attributes of all other firms apart from my firm. Home I's total cost function is CI. QIAI. So it is dependent upon the quantity which I'm going to sell and it is also going to depend upon the attribute, right? So maybe that attribute is advertising. So that advertising will have a cost, right? Maybe that attribute is a location. So if I want to uh, sell the bread at, at a certain location, or maybe that's a prime location. So I have to pay a lot of cost. I have to pay, I have to incur a lot of cost in order to acquire that location. So that also will be taken care of. So my profit function is going to be revenue minus cost, which is PIQI minus CI QI AI. So it is PI into QI, that is revenue minus cost, right? So you can find out, I mean, there can be N first order conditions here because there are N forms. So we can take, uh, we can solve for the Nash equilibrium, uh, solving for the best response functions with respect to each price. So in Kurno, we found out del pi by del q1, del pi by del q2, and so on, del pi one by del q1, del pi two by del q2. Here we'll be doing del pi one by del P1, del pi 2 by del P2, and so on and so forth. So we can solve for Nash equilibrium. Solving for best response function. by taking each firm's first order condition, right? With respect to price, with respect to price. So we can write like what? We can write uh, del pi i by del pi. Huh? So, of course, this, uh, I'm sure you, you, you know this, that this QI is also the function of PI now. Uh, so, first function as it is into derivative of the second, that is with respect to PI, plus second function as it is into derivative of first with respect to PI is one minus. Now, here also QI is the function of PI. Remember that. So it is del CI by del QI into how QI is changing as PI is changing. So you have PI here, which is imbibed in QI. So you'll have to differentiate CI with respect to QI first and then QI with respect to PI. Equals to zero right, equals to zero. So this is, let's say, A. This is, let's say, B. Right. So if you look at it, this is sort of the marginal revenue, right? This is like sort of marginal, not the usual marginal revenue, which you get by an increase in quantity. So del, del TR by del Q, that is what marginal revenue is. But this is the marginal revenue which you're going to get from an increase in price. So I'm writing it as sort of 
the marginal revenue. This I'm talking about A first, sort of marginal revenue. Not the usual mar MR. from an increase in quantity but rather an increase in MR from an increase in price right that is first thing and other thing which you also have to remember is when the price has increased right so definitely it is going to increase the revenue on the existing sales hmm. but you also have to understand one thing that with an increase in price there could be the fall in the quantity as well which will be sold uh, so it might have del qi by del pi that could be negative uh, so you'll have to take care of that effect as well. So definitely when the price has increased, your revenue could increase because for the same amount of quantity which is sold, you are selling it at the higher price. But when the price has increased, your uh, quantity sold can fall. Uh, that's a negative relation that also you have to take care into account. The increase in price increases the revenue on existing sales of QI units But we must also consider the negative effect of increase in price on the quantity. Of decrease in sales. This, that is your del QI by del pi into pi that is the negative effect that would have been earned if uh, on these sales that would have been on, <clears throat> on these sales. Now, with an increase in price, your uh, sales are going to fall. When the sales are going to fall, your costs are going to fall. When the sales are going to be lesser, the costs are also going to be lesser. Nah? So this B part, this is telling you the cost savings. associated with decrease in sales that accompany an increased price. That accompany an increased price. 
right? <clears throat> so you will get the system of n first order conditions. So as you have del pi i by del pi i, you also have del pi one by del p one, del pi two by del p two, and so on to del pi n by del p n, and you solve them simultaneously to get the equilibrium. So the Nash equilibrium. is found by simultaneously solving by simultaneously solving the system of first order conditions. The system of first order conditions, right? So this is what your very simple case of product differentiation. This is just a theory, not not even an example. Uh, so, I mean, from the last few recordings, we are just trying to tell you how you can solve a Burton paradox. So you can solve Burton paradox if you have the Cournot case. You can solve Burton paradox if you have differentiated products. You can solve Burton paradox if you have capacity constraints. So these are the ways that you can avoid. Burton paradox, right? Okay, beta. <clears throat>